my life will change i will never be the walk out will never be the same i've touched your grace my life will change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life will change i will never finances with fear and trembling man of god sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it you don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while, when you want, one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh, my life must change. My life will change. Eh, my life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will. We'll read from verse 4 down to 10. The verse of emphasis is verse 10. Please listen, my brothers and my sisters. This is a message to the body of Christ. We must be careful. We are missing a very major key. The dimension of spiritual diligence. It cannot be bought. There are certain wells you must dig by yourself. Africa likes prophecy. We like impartation. We like to receive. But there are wells that must be dug. There are, there are fountains that must be broken. It's a sacrifice. The price is death. Are we together? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. 2 Peter 1 For if these things be in you Look at this now And abound They make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ 9 But he that lacketh these things is blind And cannot see afar off And hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins 10 Wherefore the rather He says brethren give diligence to make your calling And your election sure It is true you are called but prove it it is true you are called, but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure. It is true you are a prophet, but prove it. It is true you are an apostle, but prove it. It is true that God has raised you to be a voice, but obtain grace to prove it. Give diligence. Diligence. Diligence in prayer. Diligence in the study of the word. Diligence in the sacrifice of compliance. Listen, let me tell you. Real success 
is not at a platter of gold at any level whether it is spiritual success whether it is financial success whether it is grace and influence it is a sacrifice of continual press as your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you is god speaking to us this is where men are separated from boys this is where what provides the disparity in ministry this is what provides the disparity in business this is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives i've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people and i am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things these people when you see a wealthy man all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on when you see a man of god you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on when you see a great person even politicians it's amazing that those people don't sleep two o'clock three a.m they are organizing meetings there are men of god who organize vigils they sleep by five six and by eight they are awake to attend to programs whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice it says to be diligent someone will have to obtain that grace today wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that people are lucky no there are many platforms of advantage like prophetic connections like all of these kinds of things but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence hallelujah diligence this is what i've learned in my life as i have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life i have tried to look for what is the 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 impediment what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things but i found out that most people are not diligent most people are hopeful most people are prayerful most people are very futuristic but the ability to stamp your feet and say i will walk this thing in the name of jesus until it works ministry must work doors must open by the price of diligence the labor dimension jesus said my father walked hitherto i walk my father walks and i walk to the point that even seated at the right hand of the father he's still engaged making intercession for the saints many african nations respectfully speaking we have missed on the price of diligence spiritual diligence socioeconomic diligence the diligence of mentorship the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open can i be honest with you and submit to you next year will come and go year after next will come and go another year will come and go a decade will come and go your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say look i am ready to walk this thing thank god for prophetic words they are not a lie but they only work for those who walk prophetic word does not work for those who hear it works for those who walk diligent Is God speaking to us tonight? Now let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out. Now I don't claim to have known God for too long. But I have enjoyed a little bit of His presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single look up the single most important factor that governs the dealing of god with a man is the state of your heart the purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to working with god write it down There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. 
but listen to me my brothers and my sisters there is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man a people a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God the motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting vetoes your obedience no matter what you do with God you are not ready to start with God until he is able to x-ray your heart the purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with God you have to understand this there are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things we do business we fast we pray we do ministry but I have discovered in my work with God and from scripture that God is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man and I preach many messages along this line please get them and listen to them see the great in this kingdom are not necessarily the most diligent the great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with god but there is something i know about god the purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of god to you the state of your heart why do you want to prosper why do you want anointing why do you want to be a president why do you want to be a governor why do you want to be a man of god why do you want to be a business mogul do you know for many believers this is where the real corruption lies that the motive and the motivation intrinsically is not right I know several men of God who will do anything within scripture to get power. They have the stamina to fast for as long. They have the stamina to pray. But the truth is that intrinsically, God has not found a space for himself in their motive. If there is one secret about my life, I tell you this. And I say it before God and I say it before you. If there is one secret, it is that if I prefer that I go to be with the Lord, if God cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motif. It's not just about anointing. Listen, it's not just about prosperity and influence. You know, many times when I travel and people are receiving me and the honor, the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything, and I see people admiring, and I just nod my head. I say, oh dear, oh dear. May God have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding. Because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are, we are caught up and we go and say, no, me too. I must be rich. I must be blessed. And we start fasting already your motif has cancelled everything and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men I will draw all men I want to marry why I want children why I want increase in ministry why listen it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men it is within God's power to lift men riches and honor come from him the influence and the power and the grace comes from him the problem is the state of our hearts the greatest prayer therefore is not even intercession for souls the greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards the greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies the greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne the throne where he can be seated the prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer god cannot ignore please koinonia listen to me these are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year there are people who God loves them as savior to all but doing the business of destiny it has not started until that death happens so sometimes when people come and say apostle I want an impartation I want grace with all it's a privilege to be able